these are quite hard. Good demonstration, Max. Very cool wheels, I think. 11 badges, more than 70 horsepower extra. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max, and today we are driving the mini Countryman John Cooper Works, which means that we've got the new 306 horsepower four cylinder at the front. So, enough reason to take it for a drive. Uh, I'm going to show you the spec we've got it in, show you the interior. We're going to drive it along this road uh, towards the Autobahn for a little blast over there. Um, but before we begin, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive updates when we upload a new video. And uh, check us out on Instagram at Autotop.nl. Okay, so the spec we've got it in, in the proper color, rebel green, dark green, really cool. Uh, combined with all those red and black accents around the car, it, it just looks super cool. We've got some radiators behind these air ducts. Uh, we've got a new grill with a nice red accent in there. A John Cooper Works badge, of course, the new mini badge. Uh, a little power bulge even. Very powerful car. Standard, it comes on 18 inch wheels, but this has the circuit spoke 19 inch wheels with John Cooper Works brakes behind them. Uh, very cool wheels, I think. The new wheel designs uh, by Mini are a lot better than before because those Playmobil Lego wheels, I, I didn't really like those. I, I think this looks really good. Uh, John Cooper Works badge on the side, again with a red accent, red mirror caps, red striping. All four is standard, uh, so four wheel drive is standard on the Countryman John Cooper Works. We got this car at Van Laaghoven Mini, so thanks guys for borrowing us your car. At the rear we've got the new LED rear light units, uh, a Countryman written on the back. It's not really a badge anymore, it's like 11 badges. It's the crossover by Mini of course, it's not massive. But it is very practical, so it's it's kind of a cool um, size car, I think. We've got a new exhaust as well with some valves in there. As you can see, 85 mil diameter. Uh, but because of the new regulations, OPF and stuff, this car doesn't really have a sound anymore. So the boot, pretty big, I would say. It's a little bit bigger than in a Clubman. That's a very practical space with an electric boot as well. Red roof, black roof rails. It's a cool spec. So, what do we have here? We have the new four cylinder, as I said, two liter twin power turbo with 306 horsepower and 450 newton meters. That's up from 231 horsepower and 350 newton meters. So that's quite a lot, more than 70 horsepower and 100 newton meters extra. Uh, you're going to feel that because the 231 horsepower, 350 newton meters uh, was always a bit too, too lean for this car because this car weighs over 1500 kilos uh, it's it's just about well I, I guess it's about 60 kilos heavier than a clubman um, so this car always felt a little bit sluggish a little bit heavy uh, and just a little bit underpowered so I'm really happy that they decided to go for a 306 horsepower engine I also think that this car deserves this engine and also this engine fits this car better it fits mini a lot better than BMW uh, we've got the new 8-speed, so the ASIN unit, not the ZF, uh, which I'm not a big fan of, as you may know. Uh, it's a bit jerky and it's just not as smooth as the ZF unit. Okay, we'll take a look at the interior as well. Um, we've got the John Cooper Works seats. I said this in my Clubman review as well. Uh, these are quite hard. So go and drive one and decide for yourself if you think that this is too hard. It is very, very hard and not that supportive. So it's a weird combination between hard and a little bit loose. So yeah, not a big fan of the seats for longer distances and stuff. I am a fan of the interior though. 
I think it looks cool with this piano black, the red striping down here as well. We've got some lights in there as well, and there, underneath here. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a nice looking interior and it does feel quite premium. The buttons are really nice, they feel good. They have a nice weight to them. Uh, we've got the drive selector right there, so we can select sport, mid or green. Of course, we are going to select sport because we are sporty guys. Um, then we're going to put the traction in sport mode as well. This car has all four, as I said, so four wheel drive, but in essence, it's a front wheel drive car. If it needs more grip, it will send some power to the rear wheels. Uh, it also has a limited slip diff at the front. So it's basically the same setup as a BMW X2 M35i or a BMW M135i X-Drive, the new one. Um, so let's drive it and we'll see what that setup is like in the Countryman and how it compares to those other two and to the Clubman of course. So we've got a lot of fake sound coming through the speakers as we're used to these days. But the turn in and everything, everything feels really sharp. Also because it is very stiff, it's a centimeter lower than a regular Countryman. You get adaptive uh, suspension as standard on the works as well. <coughs> so we'll do a launch control. It should do 5.1 seconds to 100, which is actually a lot faster than before. Uh, it used to do six and a half seconds and it now does 5.1. So that's 1.4 seconds quicker than before. That's a big difference. Um, yeah, you're going to notice that. Same goes for the Clubman, by the way. They bo both had this same update engine-wise. Uh, so the Clubman does 4.9, the Countryman does 5.1. Both. 1.4 seconds quicker than before. That's that's good. And it's finally at the level where I think it should be. And it should have been here for a long time. Uh, now it can compete with a Cupra Atega or a VW T-Roc R's. Cars like those that, that have these 300 horsepower four cylinders and, and have had them for a while in this segment. Ugh big jerk on the steering wheel with the shift. I don't know if you guys saw that, but that was a bit weird. Yeah, again, not the biggest fan of this gearbox. Uh, well, yeah, what are you gonna do? Not the biggest fan of this exhaust either. It's absolutely nothing there. Just a lot of blowing sound. Okay, watch my steering wheel. I'll shift in the corner. Oh, that was the rev limiter already. Good demonstration, Max. Oh, okay. So you get this jerk with the shift. I'm not a big fan. I, I'm, I'm going to stop talking about it now. Not a big fan. Um, what am I a fan of? Well, the fact that it now feels like a properly fast Mini. I know it's not mini, this car, because it's quite large, but it feels like a fast car. And it, it used to feel like a heavy car and a, a little bit of a slug. Uh, not really deserving of the Joker Works badge, if you ask me. It felt a little bit underpowered. Now it feels nice and fast and agile and, and zippy, uh, like a mini should. It should feel you know direct and yes, the suspension is quite hard the seats are quite hard as well but that does mean that you know you feel like you're driving something special and that will something that will go around the corner with some gusto so we'll put it in sport for the gearbox again and we'll see what we can do on the autobahn top speed should be 250 kilometers an hour limited of course here we go oh. jerky
It also feels really nice and stable. I'm in sport mode, so the, the suspension is, the dampers are at their firmest, but it's not too bad. Uh, around town, you do feel that, you know, it's re really stiff, but here on the Ultimaan, it's okay. It's not annoying or anything. So we're at 251. those Jungkook Works brakes which are really good. One of the reasons you should go for a Jungkook Works is the fact that it gets those brakes. So what should you compare this to? Well I briefly talked about it. Uh, VW T-Rock R, Cupra Ateca, you know little crossovers with a 300 horsepower four-cylinder engine. I think you know the, the Cupra Ateca is a little bit bigger, a little bit more practical. The T-Rock is probably a little bit smaller, um, and this is right in the middle. But I think that this is you know the most sporty suspension, chassis, steering, um, and the most funky one. I mean, if you want something different, you go for something like this. If you want something that that's a little bit more average or a little bit more like through the middle. <laughs> I don't know if that's a correct term, but you know what I mean. Uh, you're going to go for a, a Cupra ticker or something like that, which is also a very good car. And I know, yeah, it, it depends on what you feel matches your needs best. So, we're at full throttle again on the Ultima. No speed limit here, just saying. switch to mid so the fake sound disappears a little bit as you can hear that's sport mode that's mid so I would prefer this the dampers are a little bit softer as well which is nice so basically this is my preferred driving mode from now on we're at 255 yeah you can really feel that the chassis the suspension is a little bit softer 256 that should be around top speed. Oh yes, I prefer this. This is much better. Wow, that's a big difference. Okay, check this out. That was in mid, so like in regular mode. And I'll go, I'll switch to sport. You can hear it changing. It's so loud, the fake sound. This is better. So that's it for this review guys, I hope you enjoyed it. You can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle, this one. You can also check out this video or go check out this playlist. See you at the next one and have a nice day, bye.